Have you ever considered where you get your time from? Have you ever considered how it's generated, how it's disseminated, how it's received, and is it right? I'm Leon Lobo and I'm the head of the National Timing Centre program at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. So the National Physical Laboratory is where time is measured in the UK. The clocks we use to keep the UK's time uh, consist of a whole range of different atomic clocks. So we have uh, cesium beam clocks, which are based on the cesium atom. Uh, we use uh, hydrogen mazes, based on hydrogen. Uh, and we have a cesium fountain, which tells the UK what duration in time is a second. Atomic clocks and atomic timekeeping is the basis of uh, our global timescale as it stands now, and has been for many decades. In fact, the first atomic clock that was truly accurate was developed at the National Physical Laboratory back in 1955. And the reason we, do, we use atoms in the first place is that the Earth, which was used as the regulator for time and timekeeping for centuries, is not really a good regulator. It is constantly uh, slowing down and wobbling. So essentially, we needed something that was better than that. So an atomic clock basically is, is based on a particular species of atom. Uh, so as an example, I'll talk about, say, the cesium uh, atomic clocks that we have. And we have, uh, we have an atom which has a nucleus, and you have electron shells around it. Now, the electrons only jump from one level to the next if they get exactly the right amount of energy. And we use this, uh, you could say, property of the atom and this very, very specific frequency that's needed to cause an electron to jump between one shell to the next to make a clock. And the way we do that is we target or irradiate this atom or atoms with a frequency, in the case of cesium, it's in the microwave, so in the gigahertz range, with approximately the right frequency to cause that jump. And if you get that frequency just right, we see the jump, and the, at the atoms are excited. But if we don't, nothing happens. So when we get that right, we can then use the, f the signal that we put in as essentially uh, the frequency of the clock and lock that using a closed loop control system to continuously get to that frequency. Now that in itself is really a frequency standard. So it's generating a frequency, it's not a clock. However, because we know that, that 9.2 gigacycles of that particular frequency defines what is the SI second. So we start counting cycles, and when we get to 9.2 gigacycles, we can say that's one second, and we can generate a pulse. Now the thing is, we've got a pulse. How do we know what second in time that is? And that's the basis of the global timescale and how it's generated. There are about 500 atomic clocks like this, not just cesium clocks, but hydrogen mazes and others, that contribute to the global uh, timescale formulation, UTC, or Coordinated Universal Time. And what happens there is that the outcome of that process, of those 500 atomic clocks providing their data from 80 laboratories globally, creates UTC, which is a paper timescale, a calculation as, as, as such. But each of the contributing laboratories, after that calculation is complete, is informed of their offset from that paper timescale. And so we have the opportunity then to start to reduce that and then operate closer to what every that calculated timescale is. So we're constantly monitoring those offsets by virtue of that calculation, but also by comparing our clocks with other laboratories using more direct methods over satellite systems or over fiber. All of these together essentially contribute to the global timescale and form what is the basis of time in the UK. And we pipe that out to the UK as well, over the internet, over radio broadcasts. So the clocks you can buy in Argos, for example, or in any, any other shop, which say radio controlled. Essentially, the signal that tells the clock what time it is comes from NPL. 
your computer, where it gets its time from, you can access the servers at NPL to set the time on your computer. But we also do some very high-end time transfer capabilities uh, to use cases that demand much, much better signals. If we lost our, our time or we lost track of time uh, and everyone in the UK was accessing time that was, which was either not present anymore or different to everyone else, apart from not knowing when to catch a bus or a train or the train not knowing when to be at the station or when to open the doors, our digital infrastructure like the energy grid could fall over and we'd lose power. Our telecom systems could fail because they're all based on network synchronization. Uh, you wouldn't be able to access money out of a cash flow or the and the financial trading system might fail because it's based on digital infrastructure. When we stop to think about it and we start to look around, whether it's we're watching TV or listening to the radio or using the sat nav in our car or using our smartwatch or our phone to talk to someone, it's all underpinned by this invisible utility that is time.